Hello everyone, my name is Zhao Wang from Northwestern University. Today I'm going to talk about our paper on uh, efficient and secure multi-party competition from fixed key block ciphers. This paper is joined with uh, Chen Guo from Shenzhen University, Jonathan Katz from uh, George Mason University, and Yu Yu from Shanghai Jiao Tong University. Uh, so this paper is about secure multi-party competition. So secure multi-party competition is a protocol that can be executed among a set of parties to, to jointly compute one function over all their uh, input. The security definition of, of multi-party competition ensures that uh, by running this protocol, it is as secure as everybody sending their own input to a trusted party who will not reveal their input to other parties. Although we usually call uh, secure multi-party com competition by MPC, actually secure is the most important word over here. In order to obtain provable security, the MPC community has developed a set of rigorous and principled ways um, to design MPC. And we can categorize all these techniques and, and tools into three, uh, four layers of stack over here. The top layer is uh, uh, contains all the applications like privacy preserving machine learning, anonymous communication, auctions, and many other examples. So all these applications are built upon protocols. These protocols can be, for example, garbage circuit, oblivious transfer, and many other tools like triples, or OLE and VOLE. These protocols are in turn built on different kind of assumptions and trusted, trusted setups. These assumptions can be algebraic assumptions like DDH, LWE, or, uh, or it can also be some kind of trusted setups like random oracle, and also some uh, asymmetric primitives like PRF or one-way function. However, in practice, we need to instantiate them in some way that we can program in, uh, uh, on hardware. And this uh, comes to the implementation instantiation. For example, for DDH, we, we, need, we may need to choose the group that we want to use. For random oracle, we, we might want to uh, instantiate that using, for example, SHA-3. And for PRF, we can, for example, instantiate it using AES. So in most of the work that has been done in MPC, uh, we, we, mostly we are mostly concerned about uh, the proofs for the top three layers. Indeed, most proofs actually only covers the, the top three layers. When it comes down to the implementation instantiation, it is actually a, a danger zone. Uh, why it is a danger zone? Because there are so many undocumented optimi optimizations and also details that are often just treated as folklore without really careful consideration. And this can really be very problematic. So the focus of this paper is essentially the bottom layer of the whole MPC stack, that is the implementation. So we would like to understand the security that can be provided by the MPC implementations instead of the MPC protocols. So uh, in particular, in this paper, we are going to first, first focus on all the hash functions that has been used in Goblin, as well as hash functions that has been used in OT extension. Before we go into details, one may ask why we want to focus on hash functions. Well, this is, this is because different kind of hash functions has been commonly used in many, many different kind of MPC protocols. And in, in particular, in many of them, we often model these hash functions as a random oracle. And, and, and also another feature is that they, also be, they often be used to uh, hash very short strings like a 128-bit string or something like this. However, why not just use a SHA-3 and model it as a random oracle for all cases, where the issue is performance? To understand the performance gap of hashing short strings using different schemes, let's take a look at our benchmark first. So here we present uh, the speed of hashing short strings uh, using different kind of batch sizes. We can see that uh, when the batch size increases, the number of cycles that is needed for different schemes decreases. This is because uh, we can take, around, take advantage of CPU pipelining. For fixed key AES, ultimately we only need 10 cycles per AES uh, call. This is because AES only has 10 rounds, and the AES NI uh, allows us uh, to perform one, one round of encryption in one cycle. So XRP is something that is indifferentiable from a, a random oracle. It requires two calls to fix key AES, and it can hatch 128-bit to a random 128-bit string. AES plus key scheduling is something even slower. Even after the optimization that has been proposed before, uh, to, to accelerate it using AES NI, it still requires four times the cost of a fixed key AES. 
Once we go to the land of SHA, it becomes even much, much worse. For example, for SHA-256, the speed is about 60 times slower than fixed KES. And even after ESNI, it is it's still going to be 20 times slower than fixed KES. And the software implementation of SHA-3 is even slower. Due to the huge performance gain that we can get from fixed KES, uh, we are going to focus on instantiating uh, securely existing hash functions using fixed KES. As a summary of our result, in this paper, we essentially give end-to-end -end security proofs for protocols based on fixed key block ciphers. We first analyze existing protocols and implementations and found that uh, many of them are pro problematic in different kinds of aspect. And then we consider several notions of pseudo-randomness for the hash function and show uh, and explore how these different kind of abstractions uh, are suitable for different protocols with different security requirement. And finally, we show how to construct the uh, pseudo-randomness uh, for these functions using fixed key block ciphers in a probable way by modeling fixed key AES as a random permutation. Now let's first take a look at the current state of affairs. And here we will focus on three layers of the picture on protocols, assumption and trusted setup, and implementation instantiation. We will mostly focus on passive OT extension, active OT extension, and different kind of garbling schemes. In existing work, a passive and active OT extension are all uh, uh, constructed uh, based on some kind of correlation robustness. Due to the reasons that I no won't be able to cover in the video, uh, the existing proofs on active OT extension from correlation robustness actually suffers from some problems. And for this kind of correlation robustness, uh, the, the only known way to instantiate them securely is actually to use a, a random oracle. On the other hand, on the Goblin scheme, in a just garble paper, they prove the, 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 the security of the Goblin scheme assuming a random permutation. The Halfgate scheme proposed an intermediate uh, correlation robustness uh, that is somewhat uh, some, that can be treated as a relaxed circular correlation robustness. However, uh, this, although their scheme is secure under this kind of uh, abstraction, their abstraction cannot be proven secure in the random permutation model. And in the implementation, we usually we can, for example, instantiate random oracle using different uh, some kind of SHA hash sha function, and we can, for example, instantiate random permutation using fixed KAES. So up to now, so over here, all the solid lines are are secure and provable, and we would expect that all the implementation should follow all the soft all, all the so solid line over here. However, in practice, all most implementations essentially just instantiate uh, different kind of hash functions and schemes directly using fixed key AES without really considering the proof. And this is mostly based on some kind of folklore that a certain use or certain way of using fixed key AES provides us some way of correlation robustness without any proof. Let's first take a look at the correlation robustness that is needed that is used in our paper. With the hash function H, we can always define a kid function F sub K of X um, by uh, by feeding the key and uh, by XLing key and X and feed that into the hash function. We say that a hash function H is correlation robust if this corresponding key function is a pseudo random function. Similar definitions has been proposed previously uh, with weaker uh, with with some weaker security. For example, in the seminal work of Icon and POT extension, they proposed a correlation robustness but only require the corresponding student function to be a weak PRF. Uh, later on, uh, a slightly stronger version was proposed uh, in a, a follow-up paper where they, re they only require K to contain certain mean entropy uh, instead of being uniform. A typical correlation robust hash function uh, is defined in a similar way compared to correlation robustness. So essentially, the hash function now takes uh, an input x and also a i as input. And the corresponding uh, key function is also defined in a similar way. Now we are seeing that uh, h is trickable correlation robust 
if the corresponding kit function is a pseudo random function with a larger input size. Note that our definitions over here are stronger than previous definitions in the sense that uh, first, there is no uh, restriction on the value of x or i, and that there is no and, and, and that we allow adaptive queries to, uh, to the pseudo random function. As I mentioned uh, before, uh, in this paper, we we model fixed KAS as a random permutation. So now let's take a deeper look at the random permutation model. So essentially, the idea is that we are going to assume that we have a fixed uh, permutation pi um, from a uh, uh, 128 bit to another 28 bit to 128 bit string. So with AES, we can imagine that we fix the encryption key of AES. So, so essentially, the model is that with a fixed key for AES, this kind of mapping uh, uh, is a random permutation. So this kind of models, this kind of random permutation model is similar to the random oracle model, where the uh, where the access where the adversary is given access to the oracle. Note that in the random permutation model, the adversary has access to the permutation, but also the inverse of the permutation. So it's not a one-way permutation, but really just a public function that can that where we everybody has uh, both access to both way of the permutation. Uh, in in our paper, we only we only need we only need a non-programmable version of the random permutation, uh, and, and this turns out to be enough. Note that one can also model AES as an ideal cipher, which essentially means that uh, every key of AES is a random permutation. Note that uh, in, uh, this, is a, this, is a, this is a stronger version than, our, than the random uh, permutation model, because we only need to assume a certain fixed key in AES is a random permutation. Now, with all these definitions, we can construct a correlation robust hash function that satisfies our definition. So, note, uh, so our construction uh, that we denote as MMO of x is essentially pi of x, x r x. So this construction has been known for a long time before. However, in the previous work, uh, it was only shown that uh, this construction is one way. However, here we show that it is also correlation robust. In fact, our claim is that if pi is a random permutation, then this MMO is correlation robust uh, with uh, where the adversary having access to pi and pi, pi inverse has, ad has an, ad an advantage at most 2pq over 2 to the m plus q squared over 2 to the n, uh, 2 to the n plus 1. So essentially, it's a, a birthday like bound. So our proof uses techniques uh, called the edge coefficient method, which is a, a well-established method in the symmetric key literatures. We also found an attack that matched this upper bound, meaning that our, uh, meaning that our proof is, uh, is essentially tight in terms of the advantage. So similarly, we, also, we can also construct a trickable correlation robust hash function uh, in, this, uh, in a similar way. However, in, without, instead of using one uh, permutation call, now we need a two permutation call. Although it looks like uh, there are three pi's, uh, we, we, we actually only need two pi's because pi of x just need to be computed once. And then, uh, similarly, our claim is that if pi is a random permutation, then this TMMO construction is a trickable correlation robust. In fact, it is also circular trickable circular correlation robust, so something even stronger. So now let's look at the efficiency. With all our constructions, uh, MMO, MMO prime, and the trickable correlation robust, they can be used uh, securely and efficiently for different purposes. For example, for actively secure OT extension, it can, it can use trickable correlation robust uh, hash function that only uh, requires uh, 20, roughly 20 cycles uh, per hash. For for gobbling, like for gobbling that, that is used for for example for the half gate gobbling scheme, it can just it just needed the circular correlation robust version, which is uh, uh, roughly about uh, thirteen CPU cycles per hash call, and for passive OT extension, uh, a, a regular correlation robust fun hash function is just is needed, which takes about twelve uh, CPU cycles. In our paper, we also reported uh, the overall efficiency of protocols where these uh, new hash functions are used. 
uh, please refer to our paper for more, more details. So after this work, where we formalize all the abstractions of correlation robustness, uh, we also have uh, we later have a follow up work to further improve the security uh, of 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 these hash functions. So uh, re recall that in the from this from this paper, we claim that uh, uh, our MMO construction is uh, secure, assuming that pi is a random permutation. However, the advantage suffers from a birthday bound. So this birthday bound essentially means that given an n bit random permutation, then essentially we can only obtain n minus minus log of q bits of computational security, where q is the net total number of uh, hash function calls. In practice, q can be very large um, if the circuit size is very large. For example, if q is if we have a, a billion circuit, then log q is about 30. So that's not very op that's not optimal. And then in the follow up work, uh, we actually uh, find a way to improve the computational security and to be optimal. However, to obtain this kind of optimal security, we, we would need the ideal cipher model instead of the random permutation model. That's kind of the trade-off that we need to make. So our paper is available uh, on ePrint, uh, and, and, uh, and the implementation of, the, of deep various schemes can, be, can already be found in different repos, including the, the repo uh, in unbound attack, uh, uh, OT, OT protocol construction by Gawa and also the EMP toolkit.